In this short video, we're going to cover the two types of bladder rupture. There are two types of bladder rupture, extraperitoneal and intraperitoneal. The patient would present in quite a similar way. So it would be a trauma patient complaining of suprapubic pain, possibly with hematuria or difficulty in voiding uh, or pain on voiding. There are some key differences between the two types of bladder rupture and it's important to differentiate them because the management is different for each of these conditions. Extraperitoneal ruptures are more common, around 80% of all cases, and the other 20% are made up by the intraperitoneal bladder ruptures. Extraperitoneal ruptures tend to be due to penetrating injuries uh, and usually involve pelvic fractures. Intraperitoneal are usually due to direct blows on a distended bladder. Extraperitoneal ruptures usually occur at the bladder base, which is this area, and that's because usually, as I said, there are pelvic fractures associated with this, which penetrate from under or inferior to the bladder. Whereas in intraperitoneal ruptures, it's usually the top of the bladder at the bladder dome here. There are two ways of radiologically investigating in bladder rupture. You could either do CT, so a delayed phase CT, and you look for any contrast excavation outside of the bladder wall, or you do cystography, where a retrograde water-soluble contrast is introduced into the bladder, and you look with either CT or fluoroscopy for any uh, contrast excavation outside of the bladder wall. In extraperitoneal rupture, you'll see a pattern of spread which is in a perivesical location, which has also been described as a molar tooth or flame shape, which has this kind of a shape around the bladder in the middle. Intraperitoneal rupture, you will see that the contrast spreads around the bowel loops and in the paracolic gutters because it's in the intraperitoneal space. As mentioned, the management of both of these types of rupture is different, being conservative with extraperitoneal rupture with a Foley's catheter and being surgical for an intraperitoneal rupture. The first case we're going to look at is a young gentleman who was assaulted in the abdomen. He presented to A&E a day later with severe suprapubic pain and hematuria. The scan on the left is his abdomen uh, in arterial phase and if we go down to the pelvis, you can see that there's a small to moderate amount of free fluid, but there wasn't much else significantly abnormal seen in the um, solid organs or bowel on this particular scan. Because of the suspicion of bladder injury due to hematuria and also the history of blunt trauma on an um, abdomen, the decision was made to do a delayed phase scan, which you can see here on the right. On this particular scan, this clinches the diagnosis because the contrast is distending the urinary bladder and leaking out into the intraperitoneal space, and you can see it around the bowel loops and in the paracolic gutters. So this is a case of intraperitoneal bladder rupture, uh, and the patient was taken to theatre overnight. If you take a look at this single image from the coronal sequence from the delayed phase CT, you can actually see that the defect is in the bladder dome um, as seen here. This second case is another young gentleman, this time involved with a road traffic car accident. He presented to A&E and had a pan CT performed. On the left hand side are the axial slices and down in the pelvis you can see bilateral, multiple, comminuted and angulated pubic rami fractures. When looking at the bladder, you can see some hyperdense material within the urinary bladder and potential defect in the left side of the bladder wall. There's also some free fluid around the bladder in the pelvis. On the right are the coronal images and this just demonstrates quite nicely um, these very angulated pelvic fractures, just seen here, um, just inferior to the bladder, which doesn't quite look normal, and again has this hyperdense material within it, um, and potential defect in the left side of the bladder wall.
So the next study that the patient had was a fluoroscopy study in which water-soluble contrast was introduced into the urinary bladder to see if it extravasates outside of the urinary bladder wall. So uh, this first image uh, from that study is a control image where no contrast has been given, but you can see these uh, pelvic fractures that we talked about. In this second image, you can see that the bladder is nicely um, distended with water-soluble contrast. As the bladder is uh, filling up with contrast, you can suddenly see uh, some contrast, which is outside of the bladder wall on the left side, right next to this jagged piece of bone from the pelvic fracture. This last image confirms our suspicion of an extraperitoneal bladder rupture. We don't have any more images from this particular study, but if a delayed image had been taken, you may have seen the molar tooth or flame-shaped pattern of contrast extravasation. So in this short video, we've covered the two types of urinary bladder rupture and how they differ in imaging and also importantly how they differ with their management.